Hi, my name is Bryn Boslett and I'm an infectious disease doctor at the University of California, San Francisco. And today I am going to be talking to you about the pathogenesis and clinical manifestations of the influenza virus. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the pathogenesis of influenza, specifically the transmission and life cycle of the virus, compare and contrast the clinical manifestations of influenza in relation to other viral pathogens and syndromes, and list potential complications of influenza virus infection. Influenza viruses are spread from person to person, primarily through large particle respiratory droplet transmission. In other words, when an infected person coughs or sneezes near a susceptible person, virus can exit the infected person and enter a new host. Transmission generally requires close contact between source and recipient persons because droplets do not remain suspended in the air and generally travel only a short distance. Contact with contaminated surfaces is another possible source of transmission as the virus can live on non-porous surfaces for up to 48 hours and on clothing for up to 12 hours. Let's review the pathogenesis of influenza virus infection. Once the virus is inhaled, neuraminidase helps to degrade the protective mucus layer, allowing the virus to invade host tissues by gaining access to the underlying respiratory epithelium. This may be even easier for the virus in winter months when cold air tends to dry out the mucous membranes. Upon making contact with the cell surface, hemagglutinin binds neuraminic acid receptors, also called sialic acid receptors, and the virus enters the cell in vesicles. Once in the cell, viral uncoating occurs within cell endosomes. The virion genome moves to the nucleus where replication takes place. Viral RNA polymerase transcribes the genome segments into messenger RNAs. Most of these messenger RNAs will enter the cytoplasm where they will be translated into viral proteins. However, some messenger RNAs will remain in the nucleus while they will serve as templates for the synthesis of negative strand RNA genomes for progeny viruses. Progeny RNA genomes are transported to the cytoplasm where newly synthesized proteins act to assemble virions. Progeny virions are released from the cell by budding off the outer cell membrane at the site where the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase are located. Recall that neuraminidase acts to release the virus by cleaving sialic acid on the cell surface at the site of the budding progeny. Thereafter, new viruses are free to infect neighboring epithelial cells. The virus will ultimately kill the host cell as it replicates, often leading to widespread necrosis of the superficial layers of the respiratory epithelium. This graphic will be familiar to you if you viewed our respiratory virus modules. Influenza infection is largely limited to the respiratory tract and can produce a myriad of symptoms including rhinitis, pharyngitis, bronchitis, and especially pneumonia. Bodily aches and pains are very often associated with influenza related to the inflammatory cytokine storm caused by viral infection and this particular feature typically sets it apart from other respiratory viral illnesses. The typical incubation period for influenza is between one and four days from the time of exposure, on average about two days. The onset of influenza is typically sudden and abrupt. Patients can often remember the exact time at which they began to feel sick. Symptoms typically include fever, muscle pains called myalgias, headache, sore throat, stuffy nose called rhinorrhea, and cough. Patients may also feel very tired or fatigued. The acute illness typically lasts between five and seven days, at which point the patient typically starts to improve, although the fatigue and cough may last for several weeks afterwards. Adults shed influenza virus from approximately one day before symptoms begin through five to 10 days after the illness onset. However, the amount of virus shed and presumably the infectivity of the patient decreases rapidly by three to five days after onset in experimental human infection models. 
Young children might also shed virus for several days before illness onset, but children can be infectious for over 10 days after the onset of symptoms. Severely immunocompromised persons can actually shed the virus for several weeks or even months. As mentioned previously, influenza virus infection is associated with significant morbidity and mortality, particularly related to severe respiratory complications such as pneumonia. Primary influenza pneumonia, meaning pneumonia that is caused by direct infection of the lung parenchyma by the influenza virus, has a mortality rate of between 10 and 20 percent. Onset is typically abrupt and dramatic, often progressing within 24 hours to severe disease with respiratory failure, shock, and even death. Non-fatal cases typically recover within a one to two week period after the pneumonia onset, but residual lung disease can frequently occur. Even more common than primary influenza pneumonia, secondary bacterial pneumonia, or a mix of viral and bacterial infection are a major complication of influenza. There is strong and consistent evidence of a synergistic interaction between influenza and bacterial respiratory pathogens. Viral damage to and destruction of the respiratory epithelium may increase bacterial adhesion. Influenza virus neuraminidase activity, which you'll recall disrupts mucus barriers, might also enhance bacterial adherence. Finally, inflammatory responses to viral infection that may upregulate expression of molecules that are utilized as receptors by bacteria may also play a role. In the case of secondary bacterial pneumonia, patients' influenza symptoms typically improve as expected, but then patients deteriorate with symptoms or signs suggestive of bacterial pneumonia, including chills, rigors, increased productive cough, pleuritic chest pain, and dyspnea. Mortality rate for secondary bacterial pneumonia is typically between 5 and 10 percent. The most common bacterial etiologies are strep pneumoniae and staph aureus, including methicillin-resistant staph aureus, or MRSA. Haemophilus influenza is also a common pathogen, as well as gram-negative organisms and healthcare-related pathogens. One final complication that we should mention is Rye syndrome. This is a rare but severe syndrome that is almost exclusively seen in children and teenagers in association with a viral illness, most often with influenza or varicella infection. The illness is characterized by fever and rash in the prodrome, followed by swelling of the liver and brain that leads to encephalopathy, liver failure, and oftentimes death. Unfortunately, supportive care is the only treatment. The exact cause of this deadly syndrome is still unknown, but it is thought to be associated with the use of aspirin. This has led the FDA to require warning labels on aspirin products in the U.S., instructing avoidance of this medication in children under the age of 18. Thank you so much for your time and attention.